क्लाइमेट चेंज ग्लोबल वार्मिंग एसिड रेन ओजोन लेयर डिप्लीशन न्यूक्लियर एक्सीडेंट्स एंड होलोकॉस्ट सो क्लाइमेट चेंज इट इज द एवरेज average temperature in many regions has been increased in recent decades the global average surface temperature has increased by 0.6 degree plus 0.2 over the last century globally 1998 was the warmest year and the 1990s the warmth decade on record symptoms of climate change change in frequency and duration of rainfall change in pattern of seasons increase in natural calamities and water borne diseases due to mosquito rapid surface flood and droughts global mean sea level is projected to rise after these all signs that the earth is sick its climate is changing mother need to provide better comfort the earth is losing its ability to balance itself due to the imbalance climatologist of the world enter governmental panel on climate change have reviewed the results of several experiments in order to estimate climate change in climate in the course of this century these studies have in the near future the global mean surface temperature will rise by 8 degree celsius mitigation techniques global warming about 75% of the solar energy reaching the earth is absorbed on the earth surface which increases its temperature the rest of the heat radiates back to the atmosphere some of the heat is trapped by greenhouse gases mostly carbon dioxide as carbon dioxide is released by various human activities it is rapidly increased this causing global warming the average surface temperature is about 15 degree celsius this is about 33 degree celsius higher then it would be in the absence of the greenhouse effect what are the major causes pollution group population growth industrialization urbanization improper agriculture many countries have signed a many countries have signed a convention to reduce greenhouse gases
under the United Nations Convention on Climate Change. Current international agreements are, however, not still pending, still effective to prevent the significant changes in climate and rise in sea level. Acid rain, then fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and natural gases are burned. Chemicals like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide are poured. These animals react with water and other chemicals in the air. Acid rain is known to cause widespread environmental damage. The acid rain dissolves and washes away nutrition in the soil, which acid rain indirectly affects the moving nutrients from the soil in which they grow. It affects trees more directly by creating holes in the waxy coating of leaves, causing brown dead spot which affects the plant photosynthesis. Such trees are also more vulnerable to insect infestations. Drought and cold sprouts and the forests are higher elevation seems to be most at risk. Farm crops are less affected by acid rain than forest. Acid rain that falls or flow as ground water to reach river, lakes and wheels. causing the water in which in them to become acidic. These affects plant and animal life in aquatic system. Acid rain also has far reaching effect on wildlife. Acid rain also has far reaching effect on wildlife. By adversely affecting one species, the entire food chain is disrupted, ultimately endangering the entire system. Although surface water polluted by acid rain does not directly harm people, the toxic substances released from the soil can pollute water supply. The best way to stop the form formation of acid rain is to reduce the emissions of sulfur dioxide and mitigation. This can be achieved by using energy, less energy from fossil fuel to <coughs> power plant vehicles are industry and being more dependent on that is the good thing ozone layer depletion ozone is formed by the action of sunlight on oxygen it forms a layer 20 to 50 kilometers above the surface of the earth. This action takes place naturally in the atmospheric but is very slow. Ozone is 
ozone in the upper atmosphere. The ozone layer in the upper atmosphere absorbs the sun's ultraviolet radiation, preventing it from reaching the Earth's surface. In the 1970s, scientists discovered that chemical called chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs which were used as the refrigerant and which were used as refrigerant and aerosol spray problem poses a threat to the office layer timing of the river. Although the use of CFCs has been reduced and now banned in many countries. With the signing of the MOU or Montreal Protocol in 1987, a treaty for the protection of the ozone layer, the use of CFCs was to be banned by the year 20, 2000. After 2000, the ozone layer is expected to recover slowly over a period of time. Nuclear accidents and nuclear holocaust. Nuclear energy was restarted, researched and discovered as a huge source of alternate energy which would be clean and cheap compound compounded to fossil fuels. And although these things happen, Along with the benefit of nuclear energy came its downfall. In the short history of nuclear energy, there have been acts that have surpassed any claim natural calamities or other energy source extraction in their name. A single nuclear accident A single nuclear accident can cause loss of life, long-term illness and destruction on property and landscape. Nuclear Holocaust The use of natural energy in water has there was an, the Hiroshima and Nagasaki incident during World War II, the only use of nuclear power in war in history is one of the most worst disasters in history. In 1945, the United States dropped atom bombs in Japan over the towns of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These two atomic bombs killed thousands of people, left many thousand inquired and devastated everything for miles around. The effect of the traditional the effect of the radiation from these natural bombs can still be seen today in the form of cancer and genetic mutation is
coming to the site selection we should pay attention to the following points when product when site is going to be selected we should clearly identify the type of soil the soil depth and fertility level of that soil because these are the important points or whatever cultivation soil is a very important depending on the soil type all the living and non living activities will be decided or the cost will be decided how i'll say i'll explain suppose for the living components like uh, cultivation of crops orchard plants fruit trees this all all plants cannot be grown in all type of soil several there are specific crops which will which can only be grown in a specific type of soil then soil depth depth of the top soil of fertile soil is also required depending on this type depth of the soil only we are going to decide that what crops or what tree are to be cultivated or planted in that area then fertility or level of fertilizer or say like humus or quality of soil is a very important factor in determining or deciding the crop which has to be cultivated secondly if we talk about the non living component say like building area the type of soil or depth of soil decides that how that building has to be constructed say like if it is a sandy soil and the top soil is the depth of top soil is say like 2 to 2 meters of rocks while constructing any building we should we uh, we must dig very deep and uh, all the basement work has to be done very nicely and with huge investment then only our building has to be our building will be will stand properly and will stay for several years additionally if our soil is say like sandy soil soil stabilization work has to be done before constructing any building of say like two floors three floors or a big building so for stabilizing the soil it will require additional amount so that is why for site selection we should consider the soil type soil depth fertility level drainage of the soil so drainage of the soil is another impact fact, uh, important factor and this is related to cultivation of crops availability of water availability of water is the most one of the most important parameter which should be considered while selection of any site because depending on the availability of water we will decide what are crops or what are activities has to be done in that area then the natural vegetation that will be also very helpful and access to the area how much far is from the main city or what is the connectivity to the uh, roads as well as communication and several other, other functions so these are the points which are very important and this has to be considered while selection of any site so next comes the farm layout so a farm layout refers to the compiling of physical structures such as homesteads outbuildings waterways contours camps water supply roads and layout of orchards vineyard or lands so we can see that whenever we are uh, like at the planning stage we go for site selection several parameters we consider then we go for farm layout once our site is selected so within that farm layout we draw on the map that what all facilities and what all constructions are has to be done within the farm area as well as we allocate the land that our farm state our residential building will be here cattle shed will be here goat tree unit will be here water pond or fish pond will be here or harvesting pond will be here so this all things comes under farm layout so a layout of modern farm state uh, this picture can be a very good example of 
layout of the modern farmstead so in this picture you can see that the farmstead is not in the center point but it is in the corner near to the road say like near to the road or in the corner so it has some advantage as well as some disadvantages so you can see that ki this area this area this area as well as this area are used for cultivation of some crops as well as this area is for agroforestry whereas this boundary area um, there are several trees and i think these trees can be of fruit trees you can also see that uh this there is difference between this one and this area so there are different crops which are cultivated in this area see the, there is some boundary at this place there is some boundary with the trees so it has some advantage like in this type uh in this within this type of field we can cultivate such crops which are very uh, say like vulnerable to high winds or during the windy seasons we can cultivate some uh, crops which are uh, say like flower crops or uh, which are very uh, say like vulnerable to high high winds so this type of uh, natural structures are made and this is the water body and i think it is in the lower elevation zone so all this water excess water will drain out and it can be collected and this area can be utilized for fish cultivation as well as for storage of rain water and later in the dry season this water can be utilized for irrigation as well as uh, for other purposes so this one is one of the another uh, view or image for modern farm state so you can see i think this one is uh, this farm state is uh, situated at the center point of the farm like you can see uh around this farm state there is cultivation of crops and within this given area uh water uh, harvesting pond fish pond as well as uh, biogas plant uh, this can be the dairy shed or animal shed uh, somewhere here will be the residential area and this all are similar buildings i think this one is also some kind of livestock building say like for dairy unit etc so you can see uh, the designing of the uh, say like the designing of the uh, farm state depends on several factors you can see from this image it is very clear that uh, somewhere uh, at this location is at higher elevation and this side it is lower elevation so at the lowest point they have constructed the uh, fish pond so this for, uh, fish pond can be utilized for two or three purposes one is for rainwater harvesting storage of water in the same water we can go for fishing then this water will uh, the collection of water and storing here will lead towards uh, groundwater recharge as well as this water can be used for uh, irrigation purpose in the dry period so next is some comparison between traditional farm houses and modern farm houses so by these two images we can understand ki uh, what what are the traditional farm houses as well as modern or what are the difference between the uh, traditional farm house and a uh, modern farm house there is also a very important aspect like uh, within the farmstead or within any farm operational farm we require huge amount of energy so energy generation aspects should also be explored at the planning stage itself like suppose the area is uh, say like the area uh, throughout the year there is a high speed wind so we can go for uh, installation of windmills if it is dry area and uh, for maximum days within a year we we get sunlight so in that case we, we should go for installation of solar panels so this type of arrangement should be made to avoid any scarcity of power or energy because energy is required for each and every step or for each and every process within the farm stead or within the farm like for chaff cutting for pumping water for irrigational activities as well as for feeding animals so everywhere 
uh, several uh, energy or say like machinery has to be used and for running all those machinery we, we, we require energy. So uh, concluding it, planning is the first and most important step in designing a farmstead. Then modern farmstead should provide efficiency, security and safety. Then a farmstead also uh, is also a place of relaxation, recreation and play of workers, family members, guests or others. Some farm farmsteads will have high demand for electrical power and water supply. The plan should be accordingly to provide efficient distribution of these services. So uh, many times we see that the uh, farmhouse, uh, many people they construct or they develop uh, farmhouse not for the uh, say like only for economic benefit, but uh, mostly the people who are residing in cities in a very uh, dense populated area, they choose or they uh, develop such kind of farm in a countryside or in rural area and they go and uh, stay there for few days for few months to relax their body and mind so a farmstead is also not only a place for uh, agricultural activities only but also it is a place for relaxation for recreation for uh, uh, to play then for family members then guests and other activities uh, so if if our farmstead or uh, farm is uh, for such kind of activities a huge amount of energy will be required like whenever the people are going to stay in that farmstead within that farm area they will require electricity for cooling require electricity for cooking food require energy for uh, making them warm for uh, refrigeration elect light fans cooler, AC, several other equipments are there which has to be uh, operated using energy or say like electricity. So for this reason only, at the planning stage only, there should be proper, uh, proper steps has to be taken for installation of energy harvesting devices like windmills installation of windmills as well as installation of uh, solar panels whichever it is suitable in um, that area so nowadays we see that there is there are huge subsidy from the government side for uh, for the people uh, related to alternate energy sources there are huge uh, opportunity like say like for area of rajasthan area like Rajasthan, there is a huge opportunity for installation of uh, solar panels and government is providing subsidy and people should avail it. Uh, whenever I travel towards uh, on tra travel on highways, especially traveling towards Delhi, I see a much more number of farmhouses on the highway, which is Jaipur to Delhi highway and many of them are very well made constructed as well as i think all the facilities of energy generation is also there because we 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 can simply understand that most of the farmhouses are in the rural area so there are no proper supply of electricity as well as other uh, options are there so in that case there is a single option to uh, to develop uh, our own energy generating devices or to install our own energy generating devices so that there will be no scarcity of power. So environmental ethics issues and possible solutions what are the environmental ethics what are the issues and what are the possible solutions will be discussed so environmental ethics deals with issues related to the rights of individual that are fundamental to life and well-being 
this concerns not only the needs of each person today but also those who will come after us therefore many times when the environmentalist scientists they talk about long term very often a term comes in discussion that is sustainability or sustainable use so the term sustainable use means utilizing the resources in such a way that it should be available for the coming generation so this comes under environmental ethics how wisely we are utilizing several resources available resources so that we are using it not over exploiting it so it also deals with the rights of other living creatures that inhabit our earth what are the issues and possible solution for resource consumption patterns and full utilization environmental ethics it deals with issues that are related to how we utilize and distribute resources among different sectors it is a serious concern that the access and ownership of various resources differs among different group of people province nation that is a serious environmental concern an equitable sharing of resources forms the basis of sustainable development for urban rural and wilderness dwelling communities as the political power base is in the urban centers thus itself leads to inequalities and a subsequent loss of sustainability in resource management in the rural and even more so for forest dwelling people the key points are environmental destruction is largely caused by the consumption of the rich the worst sufferers of environmental destruction are the poor even where nature is being recreated as in afforestation it is being transformed away from the needs of the poor and to society and nature so it is well known to all of us that equal sharing of all resources must be done we also know that during any calamity during any destruction the one who comes in trouble or the one who faces a lot maximum are the poor people moreover 
the worst sufferers are the marginalized cultures and occupations and most of all women several examples can be seen from the history that for the development activities when forest area is being cleaned up the tribal communities which are staying in the those area are asked to shift from their own place to another place without getting proper compensation therefore it is advised to talk about equal sharing among different stakeholders if we take an example of forest area the communities especially tribal communities which are residing in forest area they are the responsible persons who are taking care of the biodiversity in their local area and the produce which are generated from the forest area are consumed in much quantity by the urban people compared to the rural people or those communities which are staying in the forest area therefore there is a need to discuss or to share equal equally among different stakeholders or shareholders second is equity that is disparity in the northern and southern countries so environmental ethics are concerned with who owns the resources and how they are distributed this can be looked upon at different levels at a global level it deals with the great divide between the rich industrialized nations of europe and asia people living in the economically advanced nations use greater amounts of resources and energy per capita per individual and also waste much more resources this is at the cost of poor people who are a resource dependent and live in developing nations most of the economically advanced nations has over exploited their own natural resources many examples can be seen especially from USA, the rural area of america where large scale of beef production is done there are several farms in rural areas which are working as a very huge company entrepreneurs for beef business so for uh, rearing the animals they over exploit land for feed, food of those animals and also they are over exploiting the water resource so this can be a very good example to understand how there is disparity among different countries
they now buy natural resources from economically deprived nations at a low, low cost. This depletes the developing nations of natural resources on which their poor depend for their livelihood. Changing this unfair economic practice to a more just and fair way in managing trade would require a new thinking on the part of people who live in the super rich countries. Urban rural equity issue. The common property of rural communities has increasingly been used to supply the needs of the urban sector. Land itself, itself that was once held as a common property resources of villages is being taken over by the urban and industrial sectors as it expands the rural sector not only supplies food but also a part of the energy needs mainly fuel wood to most towns and cities in india the rural sector not only supplies food but also a part of the energy need to most towns and cities in India. As a result, the resources of the rural sector are being depleted. Thus, while the cities get richer, the rural sector especially the landless get poor. The urban rich must appreciate where their resources are deprived from and be willing to pay a fair price for using them. The need of gender equity. Why there is need of gender equity? Because all over India, especially in the rural sector, women work on the whole longer hours that men, the life of a woman is enmeshed in an inexerticable cycle of poverty. Females have to be dependent on male family members and mostly engage for 10 to 12 hours per day in collecting food, fuel, wood, collecting fodders, selling the collected items at far distance to get better, better economic value fetching of water and finally cooking in smoky and un unhealthy environment using crop waste on other sources. Mostly in rural areas females are less prioritized for education and decision making. Males mostly are laborers in urban areas or work in field whereas women are much connected to natural resources 
Thus, they appreciate the value of conserving the natural resources compared to men. Thus, several environmental movements such as Chipko, a movement to prevent deforestation of Himalayan region in Uttarakhand, have been more strongly supported by local women for rather than men. Preserving resources for future use for future generations. Can we use up all the resources of the world leaving nothing for our future generations? Awareness, sustainable use, development strategies, policy and law. The rights of animals. Can man or single species uses the severely exploit the earth resources which we share share with billions of other plants and animal species? Within our world, there are variety of living beings. The plants and animals that share the earth with us to have a right to live and share our earth resources and living space. We have no right to push a species that has taken millions of years to evolve extinction. Cruelty to an animal is no difficult. Ethically, from cruelty to another human being, cruelty to an animal is no different ethically from cruelty to other human being. Human beings are one small cog in the wheel of the life on earth we frequently forget that man has learned to exploit nature and other species well beyond what we should use justifiable nature by itself has natural pre predator relationships left to right nature maintains a balance in each ecosystem while evolving has developed a system whereby species become extinct so nature by itself has natural predator relationship left to itself nature maintains a balance in each ecosystem while evolving has developed a system whereby species become extinct and new ones evolve to fill the world's ecosystem with new plant and animal species it is man alone that has been responsible for the recent rapid decline in the number of species on earth. Much more important man is now reducing the abundance level of so many species that in the near future we will in all probability create a major extinction span on earth that will seriously endanger the existence of mankind. 
there is a growing awareness of animals right in our country and cruelty to animals is being increasingly regarded as a criminal offense the ethical basis of environment location and awareness perhaps the most important concern is related to creating an ethics that will support a sustainable lifestyle in society this bring us to the need for environmental education the honorary supreme court of our country has turned order that every young individual at school and college level be exposed to a certificate course on environment it is not to create only an answer of environmental issues but also to bring about pro environmental actions among the variety of tools they can bridge they can bring home the ethical issues of the environment no solution is as powerful as real life ex experience the conservation ethics and traditional value systems of india the ancient indian traditions people have already valued mountains rivers forests trees and severe animals thus much of nature was venerated and protected forests have been associated with the name of forest god and goddess both in the hindu as well as in tribal community thus much of nature was venerated and protected forest have been associated with the names of forest gods and goddess both the hindu religion as well as in sibrahim tree goddess have been associated with specific plant growth the banyan tree in some regions such as maharashtra is venerated once a year by lying a threat around it is a symbol of respect the tulsi plant is grown on the doorstep outside each and every household in indian mythology the elephant is associated with lord ganesh the elephant head headed ganesha is also linked to the rat the elephant headed ganesha is also linked to the rat vishnu is associated with the eagle the sun god surya rides a horse and has a super chariot on which he moves through the sky the lion is linked to durga and black down black buck to the moon goodness the cow is associated with krishna concepts that support nature's integrity must 
thus become a part of our modern educational system. This continues a key solution to bring about a new ethics of conserving nature and sustainable lifestyle.